One of the things that I've learned in life is that there's quite a big difference between want and need. And there is no better example of this than when it comes to me and fishing tackle. I have absolutely no need for any more rods or any more reels. But there's always that nagging want that says if I get the chance, I should probably take it and acquire another rod or reel and such an occasion happened recently when I came across a hardy marksman Avon rod for sale now hardy are best known for their fly fishing tackle but occasionally they have forays into the coarse fishing world and this was probably their last great hurrah in that market back in around 2010 I think it was and at the time I'd considered purchasing a rod and a reel but really hadn't needed to but since they've become discontinued if I didn't take the opportunity that was presented to me recently there was a very good chance it wouldn't happen again um, and to find a rod and a reel together in almost unused condition, I think, is quite a rare thing. And so it was, I became the proud owner of a hardy rod and reel. Um, and I thought the ideal place to give it a run out would be at the old estate lake. And see if I couldn't find a few fish test the new outfit against now this time of year the tench are far less voracious and tenacious when it comes to feeding but they still offer a few opportunities and after introducing a bit of corn I saw a couple of fish that were doing laps of the weed bed so in their absence, I quickly introduced some float fished sweet corn, a single grain on a size 12 hook, and waited for them to return. And when they did, it didn't take very long for one to pick up the bait. Now the first thing I noticed about this rod, when compared to my cane and my fiber tube rods, is that this one has very much a tip action. Um, all of my older rods, I guess you would class as through action. Very often, just because that's how the blanks have mellowed over the years. But this, as a carbon rod, and obviously as, a, as part of its design, is a far more tippy rod. With a reserve of power lower down. The second thing I noticed was at 11 foot 6 which is about two and a half foot longer than any of my other rods. I had to be very mindful of low branches above my head, whereas normally I'd have no qualms with holding a rod straight up in this swim. I kept clattering this one through the branches. But, uh, I managed to get the fish in without too many dramas. And it was certainly a very nice start to the session and my journey with this rod and reel and towards the end of the summer in this lake the tench become far more leathery far darker in color and they lose that spring plumpness that they have it's still a very nice fish and i'm still very glad to make its acquaintance And before I'd settled in that first swim, I had taken the opportunity to go to the other end of the lake and bait another little spot that I know is quite good for tench. And when I moved up there, before I even stepped down into the swim, I could see that the water had coloured up and there was some bubbles there. There was clearly something feeding. And quite often you can watch the fish move along the narrow side of the island 
and whilst some will hug the island margin and continue out into the main body of the lake, a very high percentage of the fish will come through the narrow side of the island and then move out in front of the weed bed that's in front of me and this swim. And if you can place a bait just off the front, there is a very, very good chance that a fish will intercept it. And as I say, there was plenty of bubbles and disturbed silt showing in front of the swim, so I didn't expect it to take too long. And uh, it didn't. Initially, I wasn't sure whether it was a carp or a tench that had picked the bait up. But the fact that the tip action <laughs> fast turned into a through action suggested it was probably a carp as it tore off across the lake at a great rate of knots. But everything seemed to be holding firm, which is good. Now, one of the justifications I used for acquiring this rod was that I needed a longer rod. Um, because if there is any slight disadvantage of the shorter rods that I typically use, it is when you apply side strain, it can be difficult to keep fish away from marginal snags or weed beds. And that slightly longer length of rod <clears throat> is beneficial in that respect. And certainly I have intentions to be using this rod on the local rivers where there's a great deal of reeds and general clutter along the near side. But it seemed to be working equally well in the older state lake. And then after a very, very good fight, I was able to subdue this lovely old estate lake common. And in fairly short order, I'd moved from a tench to a, probably a near double, maybe a double figure common, but lovely, lovely dark colours. And the sort of fish that really does keep me coming back to this lake, along with the tench and the mirrors <laughs> and the crusions, the ever so occasional crusions. But I was very, very happy that I'd had the opportunity to put the rod through its paces and I look forward to the future.